Yeehaw, conservatives, how you doing? It's your little redneck buddy, Brandon Lewis, here with the Ten Con Big Seven Weekend Update. What kind of self-respecting news person, news person, would be doing something in such an unprofessional manner, in a cowboy hat, just hanging out at his office? This isn't journalism. It's not journalism unless it's corporately funded and left-leaning. We know that because the Tennessee media constantly tells me. You are tuned in to the Big Seven, where we bring you the seven big stories. The mainstream media and the establishment ain't going to bring you. What are we going to talk about today? Tennessee voters turned away due to wearing t-shirts with Tom Petty lyrics on it. Very political. Uh, Tennessee Attorney General continues investigation uh, of ethics complaint against Senate candidate Barbie Hartsberger. My guess is he'll come back with nothing, uh, just like he came back with nothing on the Sumner County Constitutional Conservatives. Yet, the weaponization uh, driven by Tom Wallace and the completely unethical, as far as I can see it, uh, campaign finance board up there in Nashville will likely continue. Uh, it's like the Salem witch trials. It's just a modern day thing. Nashville men arrested for involvement in scheme funneling significant revenue to North Korea. Crazy. Blunt pride, unsuccessful in finding venue for festival in light of law banning all age drag. So sad. Let's get into it later. Tennessee Education Commissioner repays two grand of travel expenses after ethics complaint. Uh, I don't know where she was going. Probably not anywhere that would improve Tennessee schools would be my guess. They've been at this for decades and ain't much changed. By law, all 95 Tennessee counties must have a sexual assault response team, but just 15 do. And finally, and perhaps we should have led with this, State Senator Mark Pody promises legislation to enable Tennessee to protect itself from the reach of the World Health Organization. You know what? I'm going to make an editorial decision right here. <clears throat> Let me consult my editorial board. Can we rearrange these stories? So, got their approval. We are ready to roll on. Hey, guys, listen. I'm going to ask you to help me out. Go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com support, and as you are there, you may notice something very unique and new. And that is we have a brand spanking new website, thanks to you and your generosity. So cruise around on that puppy. I haven't made a hard announcement. The only people that will know this, other than our regular website uh, followers, will be those who watch the Big Seven. So because you are here, you get this info first. If you see something broken, missing, etc., do email it to news at tennesseeconservativenews.com. If you are a conservative grassroots organization that has events, we have a new event feature. All you have to do is log in, create a little account, and then you can post events for your conservative group so that people all over Tennessee can see it. And there are lots of other neat features. Uh, you can create an account now, uh, which you'll have to do to leave comments. And when you do that, you get a lot of features where you can archive uh, certain articles and change the way uh, you view things and a whole lot of other bonuses that Jason, Jason is telling me about, but I don't remember all of them. So go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com and check out that new website. Now, if you'll go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com and hit that support button, we really do need your help. And I'll tell you why. A, we just spent all that money getting uh, the website redone. And if it were not for people, uh, generous people, out there, well, that would have never happened. I could not even have thought about that happening two or three years ago. Wouldn't have even been a thought, as I've been thinking about it for a long time. Well, I have gone out on a limb in a little leap of faith, and so your generosity is going to be required. We have started advertising on, as far as I can tell, the only speech, uh, speech, it, 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 where's Porky? The only free speech platform in existence of any size, and that is X. It's also where all of the public officials in the Republican Party and the Democrat Party in Tennessee hang out, or so it seems. It's where they primarily message. It's where the press is. And so we have started a subscriber acquisition campaign because what we learned in the election is this. When Tennessee conservatives know the voting record of the representative, they often choose better and different people. And the only way we can educate them is to get them on our list. First rule of politics, build the list. Got to get them on the list. I can't do it without you. So go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support, give. And then for those of you who mail checks, you know who you are. Uh, if, if, if life's been good to you, send us one and I promise you, I will stick that freaking money on the inner tube and we will get subscribers 
Uh, and you can mail those checks to P.O. Box 625, Signal Mountain, Tennessee, 37377. P.O. Box 625, Signal Mountain, Tennessee, 37377. And I was going to have a donor appreciation event this uh, month, as a matter of fact, but I ran into some difficulties uh, because of our conservative content with the venue uh, that I uh, uh, had originally applied with uh, for a variety of reasons. And so the best I can do right now <laughs> until we find another place is just say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for believing in the mission. TennesseeConservativeNews.com slash support. P.O. Box 625, Signal Mountain, Tennessee, 37377. All right, enough of that. Hey, follow us on Gab, Getter, Truth, Me, We Rumble. You can text news to 423-205-5600, and we will, get, we will get you in there, okay? Your subscription will be in there. Let's get on it. State Senator Mark Pody promised legislation to enable Tennessee to protect itself from the reach of the World Health Organization. This is good news. We're going to bring it to the front. Last session of the Tennessee General Assembly, the Senate uh, Joint Resolution, which established, among other things, that the WHO has proven itself to be a corrupt organization, has a history of mismanagement and scandals, and is an opaque organization unaccountable to the United States government, despite receiving between, I cannot believe we pay these people, 200 and 600 million annually in taxpayer subsidies over the last decade. It also acknowledges that the WHO has, quote, chosen to place in positions of leadership on its executive board representatives from extreme authoritarian regimes. Uh, the deadline for what is called the pandemic treaty. I'm sorry. I don't want to have anything to do with any kind of pandemic treaty after being treated the way we were in the state of Tennessee by our own party. I will never forget that. I know a lot of people are like in la-la land and they, it's just, they just want to move on, not think about it, pretend like they never participated in it, pretend like it never happened. But I'm not going to forget that. I mean, that was like the most traumatic thing that has ever happened in our economy or government in, in my adult lifetime. I mean, it, it is still, I mean, look at the economy now. that We're still living with the fallout, the inflation, the interest rates, the fuel prices. I mean, I just had to redo my home mortgage, and it went up like, not my home mortgage, my uh, homeowner's insurance. went up like 300%. These politicians are killing us. So I don't want any, I don't need anybody to infringe on my rights any further. Governor Lee and Cameron Sexton and Randy McNally are perfectly capable of infringing upon my rights. They've got a good long track record of it. So the last thing I need to do, and you want to do, is to get into this pandemic treaty, which is why Senator Mark Pody, one of the few true blue conservatives that we have in the Tennessee Senate is pushing this through. Back to the story. The pandemic treaty that loomed for early summer this year has passed without a treaty being put in place, mainly due to pressure from citizens around the world, no crap, pushing back on what is viewed as an unmitigated attack on individual freedom. This means that every country, including the United States, still has to be concerned that its federal governments will agree to this tyrannical measure and be putting things in place that restrict the movement of its citizens based upon orders from the World Health Organization. I can't believe any sovereign country would take orders from any weird conglomeration of people sitting at a desk somewhere in another country. I, I don't get this. I guess it is globalism's coming. Senator Mark Pody says that he is working on legislation that would enable uh, the state of Tennessee, based on our state's rights and the Constitution, to separate ourselves from any attempt by the federal government uh, would try to bind us to any type of agreement to reduce our constitutional rights. Pody recently stated, quote, No matter what the World Health Organization says, we don't want them to have any binding or legal authority in Tennessee constitutionally. And looking at the Tenth Amendment, I don't see where the president can do an executive order to authorize a foreign entity to tell us what our health should be. That's not right. Good for you, Senator Mark Pody. We need more like Mark Pody up there and less like a bunch of the others. All right, moving on. Tennessee voters turned away due to wearing T-shirts that apparently were campaign material. Now, now one of these I think is a little questionable. I'm just going to be honest. One of these is just ridiculous. Here we go. On August 1st, Election Day, some Williamson County voters who went to vote were turned away from voting initially because of their attire. What could they have been wearing? State rep, state senate race T-shirts, maybe a Trump shirt? Let's find out. Randy Tate and Emma Holmes both of Franklin went to the designated voter center uh, of their choice in Pierre, I guess that's Pierre Creek Elementary School, uh, to cast their votes 
for the chosen candidate. As Holmes explains, when she entered the polling location, she noticed Tate, who had been sequestered by polling location managers and told to flip his T-shirt inside out, which is a nostalgic nod to the campaigns of years past, featuring the Reagan-Bush logo. Now, you probably really shouldn't wear that in a polling place. It's a Republican candidate. It'd be no different than if you wore an Obama shirt. So, yeah, yeah, okay, they're not really on the ballot, I understand, but it, it, it signals to me, it signals, I'm just going to be honest, we did an interview with them. I, I, I don't know that I would not have said the same thing if I were a poll worker. I'm being truthful. That's just Brandon. As you, well, this stuff gets out of hand, right? I mean, who, who, somebody could wear something from any election, and people know, right? It's, it's basically a signal. But this one, on the other hand, I completely disagree with. Holmes attempted to enter the location and vote, but, uh, but this is the, the lady. Holmes, Emma, attempted to enter the location and vote, was told her T-shirt uh, emblazoned with one line from Tom Petty's classic hit, Free Falling, which I can play on my guitar. I, I'll do it for you if you, if you ever see it. Loves Jesus and America too. Was inappropriate in a legal attire because it was considered campaigning and needed to be turned inside out if she wanted to vote. The unnamed poll supervisor, I wish somebody would find this person's name because they really, they really need to be outed. On adherence to the quote, that's political campaigning, you can't wear that policy. And Holmes and Tate were both forced into their shirts, uh, inside out, etc. The Williamson County Election Commission uh, met last week um, and explained an explanation from the employee of the Election Commission in defense of the poll supervisor in question, stating that the poll worker was, quote, being protective and was afraid. Well, they weren't afraid to try to disenfranchise somebody. That doesn't sound like somebody with a lot of fear in their heart to me. The poll worker was afraid uh, of what the poll worker was afraid of was never made clear. Tennessee law prohibits campaign materials inside and within 100 feet of the polling location, uh, very specific in that it applies to candidates in uh, question on the current ballot, neither of which applied in the case of Tate Holmes. Maybe I can read the TCA code. I could be wrong on that Reagan Bush thing, but it seems, it seems to be out of the spirit of the law. That would be my guess. Now, the Jesus in America, too. I was on... Uh, Yaffe's show here on 102.3 in Chattanooga. I think we're going to start doing a recurring uh, a recurring segment with him. So go check out Yaffe's show over there. He's on from 1 to 3, I think 3 or 4. I don't remember the exact time. I know he starts at 1. I think he's over at 3. I'm not sure. He also does a show in Huntsville. But nonetheless, he asked me, well, why do you think this happened? I mean, what what's the, what's the offensive thing? Well, there's only one of two things that it could be offensive, right? Uh, loves, well, we know loves probably isn't what got him in trouble. Loves doesn't get people in trouble. Today, love is anything, right? You have a man and a man, a woman and a woman, uh, a, a dog and a tree, and a, it, it, three dogs, four trees and a toaster. Like, it's all, like that, that's, we, we got to be completely accepting of that. Uh, and is just a connector, and two it, it is, is a filler word. So it's either Jesus that this poll worker found remarkably offensive and divisive and partisan, which I don't think it is, or America. It's either Jesus or America. So I would just ask the poll worker, if, which is it? Which is which is the uh, which is the offending word, Jesus or America? I'd bet a thousand dollars it's a Democrat, because Democrats hate the founding of our country, the Judeo-Christian ethic, and they hate America. So my guess would be it's a dem. I could be wrong, though. You never know. All right, guys. Next story. Tennessee Attorney General continues investigation of ethics complaint against Bobby Harshbarger. Harshbarger won the Republican primary for the Tennessee Senate, representing District 4, uh, replacing liberal, awful Senator John Lundberg. So glad to see him gone. It was costly and became heated at times. Complaints filed against Harshbarger involve the possibility of campaign finance uh, violations as well as potential collusion after voters received a series of text messages criticizing Lundberg. Those texts were sent from a political action committee, East Tennessee Conservatives PAC. In the beginning, uh, the Tennessee uh, Registry of Election Finance Board, which I think is just like an incumbent protection board, these people have two completely different standards. They have one for the establishment, which is it doesn't matter how many reports are sent, how long and detailed they are, they're going to ignore them and not even look into them. And their other standard is even when the uh, even when the attorney general investigates a group, says there's no wrongdoing, that they go chase them down anyway, and they'll go chase people down even when a complaint isn't filed. Tom Lawless is an idiot. He is ruining, ruining the credibility of that board to be uh, seen as impartial. I can't believe the other members of the committee aren't like, if we keep doing this, 
Are we going to start getting letters from senators and state reps asking questions about our behavior? I bet you will. It might happen sooner than you think. Although Scrimetti expressed concern about investigations on this nature, it appears that his office is continuing with the complaint investigation against Harsberger. Scrimetti said there uh, is no timeline for when uh, the investigation would be finished. A final decision will not be made by Scrimetti's office. Instead, you know, I'm going to reach out to them. Jason, can you reach out to them? They had some findings from the Sumner County constitutional thing. You know, they didn't see anything, but I would like to know if there was, if there were any records, or was anything uh, created. I'd like to just read the report myself and maybe share it with folks. Final decision could not be made by Scrimetti's office. Instead, the report, their findings of the Bureau of Ethics and Campaign Finance, who in return send that information to these clowns, Registry of Election Finance Board, and final determination, etc. As I've said before, you think weaponization of government offices and agencies is something that you only see on Fox News and OAN and Newsmax. Tucker Carlson, no, uh-uh. This stuff's alive and well right here in the volunteer state, and it is being headed up by incumbents and leadership. It is sad. Same people that took away our rights three or four years ago. It's the same actors. All the corruption, the cover-up, the nepotism, the elected officials up there whose wives, daughters, Husbands, brothers, and sisters are lobbying and getting paid hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, and it goes right back into their back pocket. Trying to stop, you know, if you try to stop that up there, the leadership, you know, gets around you and tells you you're a bad person. You can't, you can't harm another person, right? You can't harm another senator by taking money out of their pocket. What a bunch of thieves. These are the folks. These are the folks. Nashville man arrested for involvement in scheme funneling significant revenue to North Carolina. North, North, North Carolina. Well, it'd be bad. This is North Korea. Uh, Matthew Isaac Canute. Uh, I've never met anybody named Canute. Allegedly helped generate revenue for the Democrat uh, People's Republic of Korea's weapons program, including weapons of mass destruction. Uh, Canute is accused of assisting. Uh, Korean workers and obtaining employment with companies in the United States and Britain using the stolen identity of U.S. citizens. Well, this is kind of a little bit of a racket. Uh, Knut hosted company laptops at his residences, downloading and installing software to facilitate access and help launder payments uh, to the remote Korean workers. These workers were paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, money that was funneled uh, into the weapons program. Well, that's something crazy, the stuff that happened. How do you get hooked up with somebody in North Korea to help them with their weapons program? How does that happen? When well, you're on Facebook one day and you, you click on a funny meme of Kim Jong-il and, and it was supposed to be bad, you give it a thumbs up, somebody starts corresponding with you in Facebook. How do you end up doing this kind of stuff? Very curious. Having sent thousands of IT workers to live abroad, primarily in China and Russia, um, the DPRK aims to avoid sanctions and deceive businesses worldwide into generating revenue. For weapons, and so doing so, skilled workers in the United States have missed out on opportunities. A, a skilled workers missing out on opportunities. That sounds familiar. That sounds like familiar. It sounds like the last three or four years when we've, we've done nothing in the state of Tennessee about legal immigration. Nothing. Every bill killed. Leadership, kill it. Number one issue that Republicans want to see taken care of, no action whatsoever that's preventative. We have some reactive legislation that has been positive, like after somebody's been murdered, killed, raped, then there's going to be trouble. Well, how about we just keep them out of the state to begin with by cutting off the jobs, welfare benefits, taxpayer-funded education, and mass transportation? The fix is easy. The will is absent. That's the truth. Knut's laptop farm in Nashville. I wonder if you have to water that a lot. I wonder how, how deep you plant them. Nashville ran for approximately a year between July 2022 and August 2023. He faces a maximum penalty of 20 years of incarceration if convicted with a minimum of two years for aggravated identity theft. Well, it says like this guy would be better off if he had shot somebody in Nashville or Memphis. He could have just been released without bail. Too bad it's a federal crime. He is charged with conspiracy to cause damage to computers from the companies involved, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, fraud, launder money, it, identity theft and conspiring to use uh, unlawful employment of aliens. Well, if they prosecuted the uh, unlawful employment of aliens in Tennessee, 
I think there'd be a lot of companies out of business. Guys, go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com, hit that support button. It's either red or orange now. I can't remember what color. We got a new website. I'm I'm learning it myself. And again, we're in the middle of this uh, subscriber acquisition campaign where we're trying to get a huge, uh, cohesive collection of conservatives all across the state. Uh, and it's so important. Even when I go talk to grassroots groups, sometimes only half the audience is subscribed to me and they are they don't know anything. They don't know where would they get this information if not for us, because there's not another conservative news alternative and there's not one any larger in the state of Tennessee. We're the only one that will not uh, lie to you in an article if given campaign money. It does not change our editorial content here because Brandon Lewis doesn't make any money doing this, which is bad and good, I guess. Uh, good for uh, staying on message and being in sync with Republican primary voters. Bad, bad because that just sells you there's no money in this, and I pour it all right back into reaching folks like you. If we reach more folks like you, I promise you, if they just get this educated, just itty bitty bit of education, they will quit voting for bad people pushing bad policies. Uh, Tennessee conservative news.com slash support or PO box six, two, five signal mountain, Tennessee three, seven, three, seven, seven. I was very disappointed. I printed some envelopes and apparently in a fat fingered hurry, uh, put on all of my envelopes, I think six, five, two. And so if I mail you a letter thanking you for your donations, I have to scribble through that puppy. That's my problem, not yours. Moving along. Blunt pride unsuccessful in finding venue for festival and like Tennessee law banning all age drag. So let me get this straight. You can't celebrate gay pride or whatever this is unless you have. It's impossible. You cannot do it without men in panties shaking their junky kids. Can't be done. Can't have a festival without it. Be like doing Oktoberfest without the beer. I'm, think about this with me. Couldn't get a venue because they just could not possibly in any way fathom, think, or consider that maybe shielding kids from this stuff as the whole rest of it couldn't be done because this one thing was left out. What does that tell you? They're targeting the kids. I think this might just be exclusively for targeting kids. After Blunt Pride was denied access to their annual Gay Pride celebration at Maryville College this year, I can't believe they ever hosted it to begin with. They have struggled to find a venue. The group will instead host a variety of events at different locations throughout the rest of August into September. It's like stepping on one of those spiders that has all those babies, and you think, well, I'm going to kill this thing, and then they just go everywhere. Hell, this might be worse than if they just let them have it. Blunt Pride Advocates... For all age drag, what a thing to be passionate about. Calling drag performances a vital part of Pride celebrations. With the injunction against Tennessee law lifted, public venues have to weigh whether to allow drag performances that do not have age restriction as their venues could be exposed to possible legal issues. Why do these people only have to shake it in front of kids? I mean, they never go into nursing homes. I mean, there's an audience. They're not going anywhere. Is there, is there nowhere you could go do that stuff that where, where adults are? No. Gotta be the kids, baby. Whoo. Gotta shelter your children from this nonsense. Everywhere you look. Tennessee Education Commissioner repays $2,000 for the travel expenses after ethics complaint filed. Tennessee Education Commissioner Lizette Reynolds, who apparently knows nothing, about Tennessee or education, based upon the interviews that I've seen, lady couldn't ask routine, simple questions. Stuff that I knew myself as a casual observer of Tennessee's education system. Like, if we put out 100 articles, I read five of them. I read more reading this to you than I read all week long. I skim the headlines. I follow the things that I need to. A lot of this information comes to me firsthand. Uh, and through social media and things like that. And, I've, and, and a lot of times it's, it's a slight change and a continuing saga. And so if I know this stuff, why couldn't this lady know anything? I promise you, if you if Bill Lee, which I'm sure he would, appointed me education commissioner, and you said in two weeks you're going to get grilled by a committee, I bet I could sit down with 50 pages worth of notes 
and a three ring binder and then collect some of that information and condense it and sit in front of a committee and answer questions if, as if I'd done it my whole life. Because I mean, how many questions could they ask? Lady was ill prepared. She has paid back all the travel and event expenses uh, that Excel and Ed paid for last year uh, after ethics complaint was filed against her for potentially accepting uh, an illegal gift from an employer of a lobbyist. No, no, there's there's no lobbyist corrupting anything up there in Nashville. Being paid by corporate millionaires and billionaires to, to give money from the taxpayers to their companies for pennies on the dollars and campaign contributions and backdoor contributions in the case of like Bo Watson. I mean, it is so funny. Corporation gives his wife this money. Bo then votes for that money to be given to the corporation. Then that corporation gives that lady more money. And then that money goes into the Watson family bank account. There's no corruption there. And it, it, it's, he's not the only example. He is the, the biggest example and the most flagrant example. But this stuff is just corrupt. It is corrupt down to the marrow. Lobbyists run Nashville. Like the, the, the GOP leadership is just puppets on the end of lobbyist strings, as far as I can tell. Reynolds was employed by Excel in an advocacy group that works to promote education vouchers before taking on her state government role. Last year, she attended two uh, out-of-state conferences with expenses totaling around $2,000. According to state ethics law, public officials are not allowed to accept gifts from lobbyists unless they're campaign contributions, which is the biggest gift of all, or employers of lobbyists. It ought to be that you can't spend lobbyist money as a state representative or senator. When you're living high on the hog, because you're fleecing taxpayers and, and giving the money to somebody else that already has millions and billions, often that are left-leaning and don't share our values. Why do we allow that crap to continue? And why is it every time a, a, an ethics reform is introduced on this, it is fought tooth and nail? Corruption. Never thought I'd see so much of it. An ethics complaint was filed by State Representative Caleb Hemmer against Reynolds. Only then did she repay the expenses. Reynolds was then reimbursed for the cost uh, as a work expense by the Tennessee Department of Finance Administration. So you get to pay for it. Last year, Reynolds uh, signed two different state tuition waiver forms, falsifying statements that she had been a state employee for longer than six months, allowing her to receive free tuition at a state university. All the education, but none of the knowledge, this lady after acknowledging what was called a, quote, administrative error, Reynolds repaid the cost of that tuition. Woo! Next story. By law, all 95 counties must have a sexual assault response team. Just 15 do. That's about right. It's probably about the success rate in schools and everything else. If you get 10, 15 percent out of the government, you're, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. More than a year after lawmakers passed legislation uh, to provide local law enforcement, uh, or prod rather, local law enforcement into establishing a trained sexual assault response team, just 15 of the Tennessee's 25 counties have one in place. In wide swaths of Tennessee, victims are still encountering untrained personnel and police uh, and sheriff's departments, district attorneys, emergency rooms, etc. The Sexual Response Team Act was enacted with bipartisan support in 2023. It set a deadline of January 1 this year for each law enforcement agency in the state to establish so-called SART teams, S-A-R-T, multidisciplinary groups, professionals involved in all aspects of responding to sexual assault that include nonprofit advocates, law enforcement, prosecutors, mental health providers, and hospitals. I can see how this might be a challenge, getting all these different organizations with different competing interests to work together. What could go wrong? Tennessee's law co-sponsored by Senator Becky, uh, Becky uh, Massey and Representative Elaine Davis. Both Knoxville Republicans include no state funding uh, for local uh, SART teams, even as state fiscal experts estimated the measure could cost Tennessee collectively about 200 to uh, rather $20 million annually. The final version of law also included no accountability for law enforcement agencies that do not comply. Sounds like a lot of laws they pass. They pass these things that sound really good so they can put them on campaign mailers. Like Hazelwood up here was pretending to be tough on illegal immigration, had like the worst illegal immigration voting record in the Tennessee House. 
pass something real obscure that doesn't make a difference and then point to that as if you've been doing that for 10 years. Luckily, voters saw through that. More voters would see through it if they subscribed to the Tennessee Conservative News. That's why you got to support us. Originally, the measure required law enforcement to report uh, they had established the SART teams uh, for the uh, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. The provision was stripped from the bill as it made its way through the legislative process. Currently, no state agency is in charge of keeping tabs on whether law enforcement agencies have established these in their jurisdictions. What's going on, guys? We're at the end of this. That's all the news that you can use. What's going on this weekend? This is how we close out every Big Seven because I know you're just waiting to bated breath. I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, that a lot of people fast forward to the last five minutes. That's all they really care about. They're just the best five minutes on the internet. That's what I've heard. And so, uh, what are we doing? Well, i got to go get my hair cut. It's gotten a little, it ain't looking the best. It's getting a little long. That's why I'm wearing the hat, partially. I don't have much hair, so it has to be cut exactly right. You know what I mean? And uh, so I'm getting a little shaggy. i got to go get a haircut tonight. And I'm going to try to go to the gym off the mountain, my favorite gym by far. If you don't have a home gym, I would recommend Fitness Central off Lee Highway. It is a great place to work out. Further, tomorrow we are going to have festivities aplenty here at Casa de Luz as we celebrate Ruby Doobie's sixth birthday. She might be getting a bicycle. Don't let that word get out, okay? I don't need y'all you know, telling Ruby about the bicycle. She may be getting a bicycle and some other various and assorted uh, good things. I've got to blow up bouncy houses. I've got to put out uh, games outside. I hope that the dog doesn't run away with the cornhole bags. That's very annoying. Very annoying. I've had that happen several times. I don't know what, I guess people touch them and then the dogs think, well, this is interesting. And they tote it off into the woods. What else? We're cooking out hamburgers and hot dogs. It's a good time. It'll be a good time. All of Kristen's family is coming over. And then some close friends. We did have a conflict, unfortunately. One of our other friends, we, we ended up scheduling birthdays on the same day and didn't didn't know it until it was too late. But, you know, when you're trying to get your whole family in town and you get align all the planets and the stars uh, so that everybody can be here, often it puts you in conflict with other things. Then what? I don't know, Sunday. I, we got to get to church at some point. I don't know what we're going to do on Sunday. I haven't, I haven't thought that far. I haven't thought that far. But I imagine we'll be cleaning up, hanging out with the fam still. I think some of them are staying over. Uh, I might work on, i got some shelves back here that are doing okay. They do real well, but they're, they're not spaced right. They're, they're too close together, so I can't get stuff in there. So I'm going to take some of those out or readjust it. So I may get my brother-in-law, who uh, helped install the shelving, to assist the technically inept, or uh, perhaps uh, more accurately unwilling, Brandon Lewis, uh, to get those fixed. I work enough, man. When I get off work, I'm working two companies with a young family, one of which I don't get paid to, to work for, I'm just worn out. And I, it's hard for me to do anything. I, well, I guess I could do it, but then I wouldn't see my kids or my family. And it just ain't worth it. So that's why I hire people to do almost everything maintenance related, except for the few chores that I actually enjoy, like spraying weed, pulling weeds, chopping wood, uh, running the uh, leaf blower, just keeping things tidy. Generally, maintenance, easy maintenance stuff. All right, guys, I'm losing you. I can feel it. I can feel it through the internet. I can just, I have a connection. So I'm going to move along. Uh, but again, guys, I do appreciate you. Oh, I'm going to be, let me, I got to, we got to run a notice on this. I'm going to be in Teleco Plains next week. Uh, Teleco Village at the, uh, at, oh, good grief, Rick Dram's group. I'm, I'm, I will think about it here. In just, the Teleco, it's not Teleco Plains. It's the Teleco Conservative Club, Te Teleco Lake. I always want to say Teleco Plains because I go camping there. And Teleco, the lake, the community around Teleco Lake uh, and Teleco Plains are not the same at all, as I have been told multiple times. Uh, but Rick Dram's group out there. So if you live around the Teleco Lake area and you'd like to come out and say howdy, I think it's Wednesday morning. I can't look at my, my calendar because I'm, I'm performing right now. But I think it's Wednesday morning. We'll sit, uh, send out some notifications on that. Uh, could you reach out to Rick, Jason, and get the details uh, on that so we can maybe even send a standalone message out so people know? All right, guys. That's it. That's all the news. You know, the elections were rough and tough. I thought we might have an opportunity to 
resurrect the candidacy of Frank Nicely, and I'm still hopeful of that. Uh, I know that John Reagan is fighting his um, verdicts, I believe. Basically said that most of the, the votes that were cast against him were Democrats, which we know because Republicans keep constantly killing bills. That would keep, you know, John Crawford. John Crawford's like, A, 100%, yes, Democrats need to vote in, in GOP primaries. Baffles me. There are a lot of, a lot of people in, in the party even who think that. Ridiculous. But when I speak to groups and I ask them if Democrats should be voting in Republican primaries, you know how many hands go up? Zero. And that's how you know there's this huge disconnect between what the grassroots want and what leadership wants to shove down our throat. The two are not the same because one is corporately driven and the other is conservatively driven. And that is the big divide in Tennessee. You can bet your bottom dollar. So I still am recovering from those elections. You win some, you lose some, right? But we live to fight another day. Guys, love you, mean it, be good, have fun out there, and stay free. Until next time, it's old BL signing off.